We play and call it work. Hey there, everybody. Josh here to bring you this week's uh, live sit and talk. And of course, we are going to have you folks uh, asking some questions in a couple minutes here. But we're also going to be answering questions that were left on the previous week's sit and talk. That was Matthew's show. If you want to leave questions for Steve next week, uh, you got to go to the Mini Wargaming website when we post this video and just leave the questions in there. Of course, today I get with me uh, Cullen. Oh, hi. Now, I, I feel like we should give you, like, what's the, you're, you're, you're in the whole business, you're, you're trained on this. What, 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 what is your actual title? Like, what are you to the show? I guess I'd be the producer. I mean, if, now, obviously, because I went to school for film, not necessarily broadcast. So this is definitely falls more into a broadcast role than a film role, where a producer in film is much more like the person who funds it and runs yeah. all the like the back end and hirings. Where a producer in TV would be the person typically flipping the switches behind the screen. See, I was looking for something just just short. I would just DJ I don't, I don't or something. Do short. Like, can we call you DJ? You DJ? You mean... Sounds too close to DJ. Well, which I is mean, short for if the shoe fits. Hey. Um, so here we are. Uh, we're going to give you a, what, what would your DJ name be, Colin? My DJ name? DJ Patsloff. Patsloff. I was thinking DJ Misfire. Oh. That would be a pretty good one for you. I like that too, though. That actually works. So, folks, we're going to get started. I'm going to open up with a couple uh, questions here um, that were left on last week's video. Now, Colin, you want to run everybody through how they can submit questions if they're here live? Um, well, one second. Is it true? Somebody's saying the lip syncs look slightly off to anybody. Is that just one person or is that for everybody? Josh, say words slowly. Words slowly. Um, I'm from Canada. They just, say I'm slow, eh? Just to uh, let you guys know that it, the same thing happened. Uh, I mentioned this in the open vault and... I think Dave probably mentioned it in his live show that we use Streamlabs OBS for our streams and recently, uh, when I opened it up yesterday, it just removed all of our overlays, templates, everything we had set up for all the shows. So if it looks slightly different, uh, that's why. Um, I know it, this one looks pretty much the same. This, the scale of the logo might be slightly different. But yeah, we lost all of our information, so I am slowly bringing it all back and whatnot and trying to convert more over to um, the more traditional OBS rather than Streamlabs OBS. But that's more on my end than yours. But just so you guys know, if things sound a little bit different or we could be a little bit louder, let me know. Just because all my presets and settings have changed. But just so you guys know how this show works is in order to ask Josh a question, you have to submit a question in Twitch chat via the command exclamation mark ask and then you put a space and then your question and then that'll fill up the queue first of all josh has to open said queue it's already open oh boom did he open it i don't even see I, you, did you oh are you connected i don't know um hit the gear in the bottom corner did you do you not set me up right Colin? and then does it say connect doesn't say anything about that. It says, like, change log, hotkeys, macros, all that stuff. All right. Well, I have to do the one thing I don't like to do and get in front of the camera. Oh, you love being in front of the camera. He did this on purpose so he could be in front of the camera, that folks. incorrect. Um, this was entirely so he could be right here. Give his give you handsome hit. little face. Stamp. Oh, no. I think you got to hit the humane. Humane. Connect. You can, you, I mean, you can sit with me on the show. You don't have to do it this way. No, I like to be on the computer. Okay. Now I think. Did he do it right? Did he do a thing correct? All right. Now it works. Now you're all allowed to submit your questions. Sorry if you submitted it beforehand. You just want to copy and paste them back in. Now, obviously, or I guess not obviously, but if you've seen the show, then it's obvious. But you can only submit one question at a time until Josh has answered said question. And then he's going to click a button and it'll remove it. So once he's answered your question, then you, you're allowed to submit another question. But just to prevent our queue from getting all built up and everyone getting a chance to answer questions one at a time. If they're longer, it uh, might take a little bit of time for me to read it out to Josh. Because there is a character limit, I guess, on yep. the program we use. It's not perfect, but it works. And it works for what we need to do. 
So we're kind of using the function of Streamlabs chatbot. Not really as it's supposed to function, but it works for what we need it to do. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can submit your questions if you cannot make it to the stream on miniwargaming.com on and on the comments below the video. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the rules. But without further ado now, like I said, I'm going to start with doing a couple questions that were on the previous video just to give people a chance to get on in here. But I see questions coming up, so we'll jump back and forth a little bit. So let's start off uh, bu -bu 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 -bu, right off our website here. We got WBFreak54. Josh, please bring in Lee so a question can be asked. Um, Lee's been invited to come onto the show, but he's not a big fan of being on the camera live. So eventually when he, he might come around and decide to be on the live show, but as of right now, he would rather not be. Um, Want to see a series of Lee painting large amounts of models quickly. Like how long would it take Lee to paint a 2000 point army of ultramarines? Um, so the thing about Lee is that he's a very good speed painter when he's motivated to do so. But for Lee to be an effective speed painter, he needs to not have distractions like a camera over his shoulder. So it's one of those, you know, uh, what was that superhero movie where there's a guy that could go invisible as long as nobody was looking at him? Oh, what was that? Uh, it, it, it's that sort of a thing. Like, Somebody in chat, help me out. Help Josh out. Help, help us out. Help us out collectively. We are all one big entity. Mystery Men? Mystery, this, men. Mystery men sounds correct. Yeah, I think that's what it was, right? I think so. Who? Okay, so who actually got that one right? That was... Malicious ninety one is that is that your name Malicious? I'm terrible at pronunciations of things and phrases and words. Now the other thing Cullen's going to do is he's going to keep an eye out for anybody subscribing or anything like that to give shoutouts when I'm on the Mini Wargaming website because I won't see them at all. Yep. Um, now I believe I have enabled the um, whatchamacallums? The whatchamacallums. I'm I'm trying to think of what they're called. Oh, the alert boxes that would pop up in the top. That corner for Josh, point at it, Josh. Yeah, right, uh, somewhere in this region should your name show up if you subscribe or donate bits. I think, I think, I've been working on this for the past little while and I think I finally got it working. This is, is this our sneaky way to get somebody to donate like one bit to see if it works? Maybe, maybe. Now I'm, I know I'm on to you there. Right before the... DJ Misfire. Right before this, uh, Khalifa198 donated 100 bits as well as Malicious... Donated 200 bits with the beard. Oh, look it. Oh, it works. Oh, look at it go. Thank you, Malicious. If, again, if I'm saying your name, Malicious. Oh, just Malicious. Okay. Did, did they both show up? Someone else donated bits. I don't know. Did... Oh, there you go. Okay. Also, so do you guys hear the noise? Things are working. Because there's a noise built into it, and I don't know how it works with, uh, with OBS and all this. So... I, I, I don't know where the noise shows up. I hear the noise. No noise. Interesting. Okay, so you can slow down the questions a little bit here because it'll take me a second to get to them. I'm going to finish up the second bit of uh, WB Freak 54 here, then we'll jump over to some of the uh, Twitch questions. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. As for Josh, what is the hate for the Beast Claws all about? And when y'all move, what will the content be like during that time? Okay, so as far as the content during that time, I can't say for sure, because I mean, we everything we do is relatively fluid. Um, my goal is to have uh, regular content still going out. Now, whether that is the, the bat reps going out the way that they currently are, that's probably the route I want to go as much as I can. But we might see like some of the live content or other things being replaced with maybe just some vlogs of us moving and everything going on and everything else to do with the bunker. I'm not entirely sure, but I want to have as little disruption as possible. That being said, um, I, I won't really know for sure what things look like until it's all happening. But yeah, my goal is to make sure you folks have uh, stuff to be entertained with. And then the hate for the Beast Claws. Um, I think the hate for the Beast Claws is that uh, at the time They're I started playing dumb. them, they were a very one-dimensional army uh, that I was quite good with. Well, good enough with. Uh, Semi-decent. Semi-decent. Okay. You just start slowly bringing Acceptable. it down. <laughs> Acceptable. So, they're very one-dimensional. And the thing with the Beast Claws is that the way that they're played, you either you win overwhelmingly or you lose overwhelmingly. There's usually not much of a chance for a very close Beast Claw Raider game. It's, it's kind of one way or the other. Um, so not everybody likes that um, 
style of play. And I think part of the hate started originally. I borrowed the army from David White before the studio army was done. So the first couple of videos, you'll notice that the army looks different. Uh, different models. Different paint jobs. So I played like six games in a row back to back to back. Because I borrowed the army for a week or two. Now, the idea is that normally it would have been like my video goes out, then, you know, somebody else's. Like, it'd be a couple of weeks in between all those videos. I just had the chance to film back to back. It just so happens I was the only content producer with Age of Sigmar content to put up at the time. So, the first video went out, the first pairing went out, rather, and they did very well. I, I won both games without losing a model and tabled my opponent. And then people weren't a big fan of that. They said, please don't play this army again. And I went, whoops, like it's all we have content for for a couple weeks. Uh, so I think the perception of some of the folks that didn't pay attention to the comment section when I had pointed that out was that I just was like, no, this is all we're going to play now. So yeah, I think that's part of the hate. But yeah, they, I find they're a very polarizing army. It's, it's either you love them or you hate them. There's no middle ground. And I think... Part of it also comes down to the fact that there's not a lot of options within the army. Right, so there's only so many, and they're, they're expensive. And yeah, so you kind of, you're kind of limited to always bringing at least similar-like things when you play it. So it's not like with other armies, it's like, oh, well, I really don't like X model. I so, oh, okay, I could build lists without it. Yep. But there's, when you don't have that many options, you're kind of stuck to always playing a thing that people don't like. Well, let's go through basically, because there's different versions of the beast, but there's uh, Thunder Tusks. Um, yep. There are uh, that's stone the one, horns. Is that the one the, the, with the big long ones? With the big down. tusks, yeah. yeah. The stone horns. Mm -hmm. The big cow horns. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Mornfang Cavalry. Uh, there's Hunters and Kitty Cats. That's, that's all I've got. That's all you got, right? Now, again, the, the, the big cow and the big mammoth thing. Yeah. They... Have a few different variations depending on what characters there's, go there's on them. There's a basic right? battle line one. There's like a, a hero level character if you want to use kind of old speak, and then mm -hmm. there's a lord level character too. Mm -hmm. But there's no real loadout options you can give them. It's all very minor stuff. So well, yeah, there's also yetis, right? Yeah, I mentioned the yetis. Oh, did I think. you? Okay. Yeah, um, and then battle line choices are somewhat limited too. So I think that's part of it. Plus, I'm awesome. So let's jump over here. We're gonna go to chatbot. And see that the the questions the time is all out of order here, Colin. Is that is that meant to be? The time is all out of order. Well, come here and take a look. Come here. Come here. Oh, I had to go back in frame again. See, I'm gonna do my best, but here's the order I've got them in because those are the timestamps, but they're not in chronological order. Oh, that is. What did oh. you do to it? Okay, he fixed it. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Because I think I, I had the little arrow selected over there, gotcha. so I must have clicked something. My bad. Alrighty. So, uh, jumping into some of the questions here from the chat. Uh, I'm a pierogi. That's how I'm going to... Actually, I think that's what you were going for. I'm a pierogi. <laughs> Who would win? Theo the Dreadnought or Captain Agamemnon? Uh, Captain, Agamem uh, Captain Agamemnon, of course. Because, um, you know, he's the bestest. Let's just jump right over the next one here. Let's see if I'm doing this right. Pick next. Uh, I deleted the one. It worked, right? Did it work? I don't know. I think it's still there, but uh, well, no, because if you didn't, if it didn't go away, then the person can't submit another comment. Oh no, no, I'll, I'll clear this one. Okay, it's Bob Joy, right? Well, the last one was I'm a pierogi. Is yeah. that one gone? I'm a pierogi's gone. So I okay, okay, click, okay. That's, that's so good. I think we're I think we're doing it right. Uh, so Bob Joy, what happened to Quirk? Haven't seen him in a bit. Uh, he doesn't work anymore, bro. He's uh, working elsewhere. So that might be why you haven't seen him in a bit. That does make logical sense. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got Balfour. Josh, when do you and Cullen begin Jello wrestling training, and when is it being streamed? Mm, not this again. Well, this is this is awkward. What? This came up during uh, D and D this. Tuesday. Is this something you've suggested that you want to no, do as content? No, this was when people started asking where you were, which because typically or sometimes Josh has been in the chat during the D&D &D live streams. So then he, you know, is talking to people and then people show up and be like, where's Josh? And, you know, it's Tuesday. And that's what they're really tuning up for. Most the... people are during doing the D&D. &D, so there's only Josh, Dave available to film when D&D &D is going on. 
So that or yet was it Tuesday? So two days ago, yep. Josh was obviously with a guest. So yep. when it was suggested that you were with a guest, people were saying, "No, no, you were practicing Jello wrestling." And then Chris was involved in the Jello wrestling, and it was sweet. So when it was so uh, mm. okay. So when do we begin the training then, Colin? I assume you're the one buying the supplies for this? I don't know. You were on the schedule. Well, I need to know when you're going to pick up the supplies so we can schedule it. I mean, I could go to the corner store right now. <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I need all your jello mix. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir. How many jello things do you think it'll take to fill up a small kid sized pool? You want to go ask that at the corner store? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? So the answer is not soon enough. <laughs> Next, we're going to jump over to Fury23. Josh, you want your rep models back? This is Joel, by the way. Yeah, bro. Uh, please give me my rep models back. I think he borrowed... I think it was a Griffin and something else. Um, I can't remember. I think it was some of the Light Warjacks. It was only like five years ago, though. Or four years ago. Or something like Joel, that. Is this Joel? Isn't Joel who used to yeah, work here? Yeah, it's Big Tall Joel that used to oh. work here. Yeah. Hi, Fortune Joel. Joel. Um, yeah, bro. Give me my stuff back. No, Next hold time you're around, come visit. You can see what's changed here at Mini Wargaming. Um, next up, we got Zmerg. Late last year, there's mention of another Blood Bowl League. Is there still plans to do this? Um, we still want to do another Blood Bowl League, but uh, it's not currently scheduled or planned because we just don't have the time or the resources for it right now. Um, I've talked back and forth of if we're going to put Cullen through the ringer and make him figure out how we can do it live. And just do the I would like Steam to. version of it. Do Blood Bowl 2. Well, I, I like. I mean, I, I think we might be able to make the actual live miniature game work. Instead I think of making either a could video be fun. I think either could be... Could I think either could be fun. My thing is, is like, well, if, I mean, if we have the ability to, it would be cool to see everyone use their own armies. Because I think anybody online can kind of do their own thing with a video game. But if we could do it with our own models and such, I think it would be that much cooler. Could be cool. I don't know. What do you guys think? Would you guys prefer to see... The game, the Steam game, Blood Bowl 2, is it? Blood Bowl 2, yeah. There's Blood Bowl 1 and 2. Either one would work. Or would you guys want to see live, in-person people moving their miniatures? Now, again, both would take some coordinating to make work, but what do you think uh, you'd, you'd want to see if we, when and if we get to the next Blood Bowl League? Also, somebody just sent me an Amazon link to Fun Gel. It's bulk jello, and it makes 100 gallons. What's it worth? It is on. It is not in stock. It is new for actually eighty nine ninety five American. That's not that bad. It's like a hundred dollars of Jello. Yeah, that's a lot of Jello. All right, the wheels are turning on this one. Okay. Uh, now the other thing I'm going to make note of too. I don't know if we did at the beginning. All I can see is the questions being asked. I can't actually see the chat uh, going on. Correct. Uh, so. If for whatever reason Cullen, or sorry, uh, the DJ Misfire sees something interesting, he can go ahead and just shout that out too. But yeah, if you're trying to talk to me via the chat like that and not the questions, I can't see it. So just so you're aware. Uh, let's go next here. This flux. Should I build my Primarnius Kelgar bareheaded or helmeted? I am always a big fan of taking characters and putting helmets on them. If you can find a suitably cool looking helmet, I assume he comes with one. I'm not sure if he does or not. Uh, but helmeted is the way to go. Because that I've just always, makes sense. I've always thought the opposite. Because I find that... Now, do you do it for characters? Just the... Yes. I like I like characters without their helmets. Because I think... Every, because I think all the helmets look fairly the same. And yeah, there's some variation between them. But I don't know. I think the characters should stand out. And when everyone has their helmet on, I find they all kind of blend together. But I don't know. That's just me. See, I come from the standpoint of, you know, maybe the more historical gaming type thing where... Why would you ever take your helmet off? A, don't take your helmet off. And B, especially like if you're the if you're the one in command, uh, you're the officer, uh, don't make yourself stand out anymore. Yeah. That's yeah. one of those That's ones where, true. you know, you run into officers in the field where it's like, don't salute me because <laughs> they're going to know who to shoot. To just put a big... Pole with a flag on my back. I am sergeant. Yeah. So no, I, I'm a big fan of helmeted. I think it's cooler, um, and that's usually the route I want to go. Even though there would be reasons for them not to have their helmets on, there's plenty of reasons for them to have their helmets on. And be different, bro. Everybody has the bare-headed Kelgar. 
Uh, Actually, why don't you just put a bear head on him? Like an he's an actual bear man. <laughs> Where is this? That's that's a little of the blue there, Colm. You said bear headed. Uh, okay, my mind went straight to. He's a, he's I'm a, a bear. actual bear. <laughs> uh, Nihilus, when was the last time you cut your beard? Uh, I don't know, like once every two to three weeks. We gotta trim it, but um, as far as like changing the style drastically, it's been a while. When did um, when did the Rangers movie finish filming, Colm? How long ago was that? Would be not like I guess it would be was it be three summers ago? Well, that sounds like it might be right. I think or three summers ago. So that one I had grown my beard out, and when filming, when Dave said we were done filming, um, me, me being kind of petty the way I am, I decided that I was going to take the beard and just chop the sides off of it and just have the long goatee. So I'm like, good, he can't, you know, use me for reshoots. Mm -hmm. If he says it's done, it's done. And I asked him permission before, and then I did it. And then that eventually transitioned into, I grew the rest of the beard out, so it was kind of, you know, shaped. And then I chopped the middle off and Shapely. had those terrible mutton chops for a while. And then I did the mustache, and then I grew it back out again. Yeah, there's, in one of, the, one of the clips of the Open Vault intro that I need to change has one of the videos of you with a shorter beard. Okay, yep. That still existed, and I, I left it in there because it's funny. But I do need to change that intro. I just don't have time. You know what? I, I'm at the point now where it's it's a good length, and I need to decide what I'm going to do with it if I'm going to start to. I've talked about. I've, I've been too lazy to order them because I don't have enough experience with them in doing the uh, the the uh, beads. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 metal jewelry type stuff, because the thing is, it it's the the the, the hair is thick enough that. If I just put like a, a braid into it, it usually kind of goes off somewhere crazy. <laughs> so I got to have something to kind of weigh it down a little bit more. So I've, I've been thinking about doing that or been thinking about going the route of changing up the style. I don't know. I can't make my mind up. Eventually. Said Canadian Viking beard. So like just put like maple leaf metal beads in it. I, see, I don't know if you can get them. I don't know if that's a thing. We're going to jump over to Crusher Knight. With the new beta bolter rules, actually, Colin, you got to finish this one off for me. Uh, how will you adapt your death watch? For one, intercessors seem better than your standard stalker bolter squad. Timestamp? Uh, 140626. 140626? <laughs> oh, okay, I've gone. It's been, it's been a while. Wait. Oh, okay. Um, for one, intercessors seem better than your standard stalker bolter squad, being generally the same, but with an extra wound. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this is one. I, I know that this is the fellow I was talking to the other day, or one of the fellows I was talking to the other day about it. It's still a beta rule, so I'm not going to start chopping the army up. I think that intercessors got a huge boost in that. Um, the stalker bolters, because it's about the same point cost for five stalker bolters compared to five intercessors um, with the bolt rifles. So when we're talking about stalker bolters, we're talking about the, the veteran version of it, not the intercessor stalker bolt rifle. And definitely the intercessors have gotten a huge boost. I think one advantage with the veterans is that you still have better, uh, a much better variety of uh, loadouts as far as war gear goes. So one thing I was already doing is I was getting a couple heavy bolter guys ready to put into the squads to be able to use the Hellfire rounds with. Um, so there's that. And then the veterans still have the ability to, they can move and shoot even though they're at penalty, but they can still shoot at longer range. And then you can throw in things like Terminators or Storm Shields or whatever else. So there's still some versatility, but yeah, the Intercessors did get a huge boost. So I'm going to sit on it and see a little bit. The extra wounds are nice, but there's a lot of things that are good at killing two wound models anyways. Um, so we'll see. That's kind of where I'm at with that. It, it's, it's On paper, it seems like a huge boost immediately, and it would be smart to change over, but I'm not sold entirely yet. But I do recognize that the Intercessors get a huge boost. Um, we got Corn Puffs 9, Josh's favorite alcohol. Uh, my favorite alcohol is uh, free. Mm. So it's typically the best. That, that, that is the best kind. 
It depends. It, it depends entirely on the situation because I don't think you can have one favorite for everything. So some of the things I'm a big fan of, um, I'm a big fan of any of the various types of uh, moonshine, whether it's some good old white lightning or, you know, there's some maple stuff that I uh, buy frequently that I'm a big fan of. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. And then any of the, uh, any of the stout kind of uh, beers would be up there for me. Um, but it depends on the situation. I mean, to, to drink a lighter beer if you're kind of hanging out, you know, outside, it's a warm day, because all those kind of no good beers are still fine if you drink them super cold because you can't taste how bad they are. <laughs> so on a hot day, that's fine. And that's not where you'd want to have, you know, a uh, drink a nice porter or a nice stout that's an appropriate temperature. To, to uh, You want something kind of cold. But yeah, there you go. What about cider? You forgot cider. Cider, again, the ciders depend on the situation. Depends on what the weather's like and if you're eating or not. So even True. though I like cider a lot, um, it depends on the situation. Because the sugar content's just kind of crazy. It is. A lot of those are super sweet. All right, I'm going to do a couple more of these and then I'm going to jump back to answer some ones on the website. Um, Nukezilla Player 66, any plans for a Vigilus campaign bat rep series? Uh, as it stands right now, no. As much as we would love to do it, it would have... Because um, you got to plan these things really far out ahead of time and that's the sort of stuff that when we get the bunker up and running, we can put more planning into and have larger groups um, and still be able to keep up with the rest of the other content. So currently, no. Uh, last one I'll do before I jump over. We got Uncle Servo. Josh, what's your favorite army to play solely in terms of fun slash lore aside from Imperial Guard? Excuse me, Astra Militarum. Yeah. Uh, it would be the Death Watch. Um, I think they're really cool in the lore. I think they're a ton of fun to play. Um, and I think that it, that kind of shows in how I've built both of those armies, both my Guard and my Death Watch. Um, I want the armies to be effective enough that, you know, the bat reps are going to be interesting, but they don't have to be fully optimized. I want to do the really cool stuff as often as I can and what I enjoy playing. So yeah, it would be my uh, Death Watch. I have a ton of fun with them. And I'm going to I'm going to pretend that that question was geared strictly towards uh, 40k because if you get me talking 30k, that's the rest of the show. Okay. Jump back here. Uh, let's do a, get a couple of these questions out of the way. We got WB Freak 54. Um, okay, we're gonna jump right into this one. Uh, another two-parter. Recently read that uh, weed is legal in the Great White North. This made me, after partaking in the aforementioned product, think of two things: any of the MWG crew enjoy the new freedom, and that, so that's question one. We'll deal with that first. I don't really know. Uh, nobody talks about it, so beats me. Uh, I can say personally, I'm not against the stuff, but I've never been interested in using it. So it doesn't really affect me. Other than I think, you know, it was the right choice to make as far as, uh, you know, when you read stories about some, you know, young guy going to court and having his life ruined because he smoked a joint. That was always goofy to me. But yeah, um, I've never really had the interest in trying it. So couldn't tell you. And um, in regular conversations, never come up with the other guys. So who knows? And I think that seems to be almost the attitude here in Canada of a lot of people I've talked to. Because there's a lot of American folks that come up and ask about it. And nobody really seems to care that much. It's just kind of, it was kind of a meh, who cares sort of thing the whole time. Yeah, pretty much. The one thing I would say that, if any way it's affected me, is my town is one of the big areas for growing it. Mm. So the amount of jobs that have come up in my town have been significant. Right. And and the the doubling, tripling, quadrupling of the sizes of greenhouses that used to exist for things such as cucumbers and yep. other produce has now, they've, it, it, it's been really good for the jobs, let's just say that. Well, the, I mean, good for the, the economy in a bunch of different ways. I mean, it's, I think the government, to get, to get slightly political, the government has went the correct way in legalizing it. That just kind of makes sense up here. But on a personal level, I couldn't care less. Like, I'm super happy that um, it is bringing a lot of jobs to the region. Like Colin said, that's, that's kind of huge. Okay, number two, what's so good about 30K? 
Like, I don't get why it's both a big deal and why it not being this one. This is the same one. question? Yeah. Those are two completely random topics. Well, you assume he, he got high and then started thinking about 30K. <laughs> uh, so you pitch me on what makes it such a good game. Okay, so what makes 30K such a good game for me is that I'm very interested in the lore. And from a lore perspective, you've got uh, probably about, I think, 21 different armies. So you've got the 18 legions, um, and you've got the towns of the emperor. You got the uh, Solar Auxilia, you got the Mechanicum. I don't think I'm missing anybody. If I am, then my mistake. Excuse me. But the, the 18 other ones being the Legions, that everybody has access to pretty much the same stuff. And so it's inherently, for the most part, a relatively balanced game because most armies, the vast majority of the armies, have access to all the same stuff. Um, and the way list building works is that it's a little bit more, it's not such a list building game. I find 40K, 90% of the game is building your list. Um, in 30K, you can build what would feel like a more lore appropriate fun list and still be effective if you're a good player on the tabletop. Um, it, it, it's, it's tough, it's a lot of nuances. And uh, I find the 30K community to be really focused on uh, promoting the game, promoting the lore, uh, really focused on the hobby aspect of, I can't remember the last time I went into an event, uh, like at one of the big conventions, and watched people play 30K with miniatures that weren't painted, and weren't painted to a very good standard. I mean, they're, they're usually very nice looking armies. So I find that the people that play 30K are very invested in the game, invested in their army. So it creates a community that um, does a very good job of kind of self-regulating. I think the, the, the 40K community, you know, can be a little bit too focused on different things. And I think the 40K community can be a little bit too focused on what's currently the best list. I find that there's less loyalty to your army in 40K than there is in 30K. And that's yes. a generalization. Um, obviously, there's people that are super dedicated to their 40K army and they've been forever. Um, Heavy Bolter Joe, that was in a while ago, has been playing Crimson Fists ever since he started, and he started ages ago. But I find it's more common in 30k, so, um, yeah, I just, I think that the, it, it, it's got a very nice balance of having enough flavor to the armies, but being inherently balanced. Because you'll see people bring in lists that are super mean lists, and you kind of sigh and go, ugh. My mediocre list can still beat that, it just might take a little bit more work. Where in 40k, list building I find is more important and there's more of a focus on it. In 30k, you can have fun build a lore appropriate list. Vectus Gradarian uh, said you forgot cults and militias for 30k. Yeah, cults and militias, I guess. I think, are they in the same book as the Solar Auxilia? They might be, they might not be, I'm not entirely sure. I have no idea. I had them in the back of my mind, but that's where I'm like, I think they all lump into the Solar Auxilia, but I might be totally incorrect. Because I know that they're a separate army, but I think they're in the same book. Uh, we'll just do one more here, and then we'll jump back over to the Twitch questions. Uh, we got uh, Large Michael. <laughs> it's Big Mikey, but it's just more fun to say his name that way. Josh, holy crap, new Light Lords, Blood Angel stuff. Even though Night Lords are dumb and cheaters. Uh, how excited are you slash leave for new stuff? Also thoughts on the beta bolter rules? Um, think this is too powerful or a step in the right direction to fix Marines? Okay, so very excited to see some new Night Lords and Blood Angels stuff uh, for the Heresy. Uh, the other one that they've just shown off recently today, I think, is that they've got Jump Custodies guys. So it's uh, nice to see them getting more stuff going for the Heresy. Because uh, there are so many people... Um, when uh, Alan Bly had uh, passed away suddenly that were very scared because he was kind of the, 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 the lead on the horse heresy stuff, as far as I know anyways. Um, a lot of people were really nervous that, you know, between 8th edition coming out, his passing, um, that 30K would kind of fizzle off and die. And I've always said, you know, no, it might take a little longer to get stuff out. So yeah, excited to see them putting new stuff out. That being said, I mean, I couldn't care less about the Blood Angel stuff. I'm excited that they're putting out Blood Angel stuff, but I'm not going to be buying it. The new Night Lord stuff, it looks good. I really like the Terminator guy. 
hopefully, because they're, they're talking about the Atramentar a little bit, hopefully we'll see an Atramentar unit, uh, whether it be models or rules or both, soon. Uh, Jump Crater looks cool. I've already got guys that could represent both of those models though. And then the Leviathan, while it looks really cool, um, I think that having Lee here and having the amount of bits we do, I could make a cooler looking one already anyway. So Legion specific Leviathan's cool. Um, well, the Night Lord's gross, one. Little floaty corpse off of it. Yeah, I mean, like, that's that's kind of cool, the little floaty corpse. I don't think they did a great job painting it. I think it could have looked cooler. No, it, yeah, it, it definitely felt like that was, could have done with it, even a shade or something. Kind of just long. after the fact. It's, yeah. Whether the, the paint job or the photography wasn't great, I couldn't tell you. Didn't look fantastic. Um, but it's cool that they're doing that. And I'm excited to see other legions if they get some legion-specific leviathans. But overall, yeah, super happy to see that they're they're doing that stuff. As far as the beta bolter rules, I've already kind of talked to that about that one to a degree. I want to say that I think it's a step in the right direction, but who knows? Um, Marines don't feel right in eighth edition, so it's glad I'm, I'm glad to see they're paying attention to that and that chaos is getting lumped into it as well. All right, let's jump back to some Twitch stuff going on here. Uh, K Brohem. Hey, Josh, is Colin put on his snow tires, or is he still terrible? I am still terrible. You're still terrible. I was actually going to ask Josh to do, uh, ask you if he could take me up there this morning, because it's literally like two minutes away from here. I was going to drive here, and then, but then Josh decided to not show up till noon today, so. Ripperoni, pepperoni. You, you can't put it on me. I'm going to put it on you. Okay. So, Josh, you want to you wanna, you wanna drive me over there tomorrow morning? I got a game tomorrow morning, bro, but uh, I don't believe Steve does anymore, so okay, he'd probably good. be more than happy to. Okay, perfect. See, yeah, I, you can be, I you can be a responsible me. adult and, and stop endangering everybody else on the road. Hey, I just drive slowly. I'm just that old person now. You see, you drive slowly, but you still drove into a snowbank the other day. Hey, hey, hey. Did it jump out at you? Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just, no, my car just didn't want to turn, okay? I right. turned I turned the wheel and the car was just like, nah, be. Yeah. So, the, again, the, you, you're defeating your own point of driving slow is appropriate. Hmm. Yeah. Because you're driving slow, probably irritates everybody else to put on winter tires. Might cause them to drive a little unsafe trying to get around how slow you are. That's, that's their fault. Hmm. 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 Uh, Mechasonic 9000. Uh, you might need to help me finish this one off. It's 1410.07. Stygies 8, Skatari, uh, Adeptus Mechanicus Faction, investigate and explore alien tech. I run Imperial Guard, so would you see this Adeptus... Mechanicus Division using an Imperial Guard Regiment to conduct experiments or utilize the Xenos techs. Um, I definitely think, you know, that would be appropriate in the lore. I think they would try to sneak you about it and try not to get caught. But yeah, you could definitely make an army based around that, which is where I assume you're taking this question. So yeah, if you want to run some kind of alien tech counts as stuff, I think you get away with it with this digi stuff. I definitely think the... Admech, uh, yeah, I could see that. I think that would be cool. That'd be cool, Army. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, pick next. Uh, Lavarius. Josh, how long in advance do you normally need to schedule someone to come in? A week, a month? Man plan is to come in someday, probably. Sorry, this is 141041. I lost him after probably. Sorry, it was. 1410 again? Yeah, uh, Lavarius. Lavarius. Probably when the bunker comes around. Okay, yeah. Uh, typically, I tell people we book about six months out, um, and it depends on the time of the year. You're, you're more than welcome to put in a challenge request whenever you want, um, but the more time you give me to schedule, the, the, the higher the likelihood of us being able to accommodate you. So... And it depends on what game system you want to play, too. If you're playing 40K, I'll be perfectly honest, that's the majority of the people wanting to come in and play. Um, so it's tougher to get in if that's all you play. Uh, but if you play both 40K and Age of Sigmar or 40K and something else, mm, the chances are that if you want to come in for multiple days, it's much easier to schedule that way. You pick next. Uh... Kefinas? Kefinas? Hey Josh, any plans on playing a full game of Death Watch anytime soon? Uh, so I assume you mean the army is nothing but Death Watch? 
Um, I don't really plan out that sort of stuff ahead of time. It depends on what my opponent brings and what they want to play against. Is that, does he mean like not running the knight or I the assume, armagers? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. No, no knight, no armagers, no allied um, astromel term. It, it, that's pretty dependent on my opponent. Uh, for the most part, when somebody comes in to play a game against myself, um, I give them the option of, uh, like they, they help me build the, uh, the mat. Uh, so I usually let them pick what terrain set we use and I'll let them set it up. We might get tweaked ever so slightly before we know deployment zones just to make it easier to film on, a little bit easier to use. Um, then I let them pick if we do, and this is this is generalization, it's not always, if I, there's a specific goal in mind, but it typically isn't. Let them pick between using the open war cards um, and then the, um, I don't know why I'm having a brain fart on this one, uh, the Maelstrom or the Eternal War. Let them pick that, and then let them pick what army they want to play against. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's somewhat dependent on my opponents because I've always been of the mindset for the content I produce. I enjoy watching a game where it's just two people playing, having a good time. Um, so that's where I tell my opponents, just what do you think will make for a fun game for you to play, and that will translate hopefully into a video that people enjoy. So. That's a long-winded answer for me saying, I don't know, no plans. Yeah, things ebb and flow as days go on, and especially sometimes you come in and you don't think you're playing a game, and then sometimes you end up playing a game, so. Yep, well, I had a fella in the other day, uh, sh I think, yeah, it was when Sean came into play, and he specifically, because he runs Knights and Chaos, and he said, I want you to run your Death Watch and Knights, because they kind of match up interestingly, I want to see what happens. Mm -hmm. So, sure. And that's usually kind of how it goes. Yeah, because I think you know, you'll occasionally catch the day that Luke will be like, oh, I'm really excited to play Space Wolves today. And then he, he has a guest who comes in and is like, I want to play your Death Guard. And then, then you get Luke going around, oh, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to play Space Wolves. Yeah, but he always just, Luke is such a little <laughs> complainer. He'll be like, I want to play Space Wolves. And when they ask him to play Space Wolves, he's like, oh, I wanted to play this instead. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. Catfish666. Any plans for Valhalla or LVO in the near future? Um, LVO probably won't get the chance to get down there um, in the near future, but who knows? I mean, until the bunker settles down, hmm, I can't really say. Same thing for Valhalla. Uh, I haven't even started thinking about it yet, unfortunately. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of busyness happening right now. But, yeah, no, who knows? By fall, maybe... I'll have something figured out, but no current plans, but I tend to, uh, like I said earlier, it's the, the, the regular ebb and flow, kind of go with the flow, and I make plans like that a month ahead of time, usually. Yeah, pretty much. I think it was finally yesterday that we all started to talk about what the heck we're doing for Adepticon. For Adepticon, yeah, because we all want to go do Adepticon. So I guess there's a, the Adepticon plans are starting to come together slowly. Very slowly. And then, <sighs> and then you have Aaron, who planned everything and has already got everything solidified two months ago. Yep. And then there's us. <laughs> Bob, 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 Bob Joy. Bob Joy back. Uh, I assume you're asking about uh, my old buddy Q-Fed there again. Honestly, the, 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 the what I've done, because um, I still see him every once in a while, anything he wants to talk about what he's doing nowadays or if he wants to share what he's doing for Wargaming, that's up to him. Um, I don't want to mistakenly, like... Um, put out all of his, his personal info and say, oh, well, he's he's working there, he's doing that. That's something that if he wants to share, he's more than welcome to, but out of respect for his privacy, um, I don't really talk about that a whole lot. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We got Balfour. Do, 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 do. Have you finished filming the Death Watch campaign? Your thoughts and review your experience. I have not finished uh, filming it yet. Um, so far, I've had a lot of fun with it. I think Luke's doing a very good job. I think it's a very tough thing to keep balanced, uh, but he's doing pretty darn good. So, so far, uh, very positive. I'm having a ton of fun. Other than that, um, feel free to ask me again when we actually finish up the campaign. We're still... Yeah, how many episodes, more episodes you got left? Um, two? There's still four that have to go out and two that need to get filmed. Okay, okay. So they've seen about half of it. Um, well, it's 12 episodes, and they've seen eight of them so far. So, yeah, okay, a little so more than half. half. All right. We got the Rogue Spartan. 
Which 40k model should I get? A Razorback or a Dreadnought with mostly anti-infantry weapons? Um, on, I don't really know what army you're at in 200th and L, so I can't say for sure. My, my general rule of thumb for this kind of stuff is buy whatever you think looks cool and go that route. Um, yeah, kind of whatever your favorite is. It's all good either way. But if you want to shoot me an email, josh at miniwargaming.com and give me a little bit more context, or if you're still in here, the Rogue Spartan, if you give me more context, I'll be able to uh, answer maybe a little bit better for you. Uh, I'm going to jump back to the website real quick, get a couple questions from there. Uh, so we've got the Danish Viking Alex. I like how your name's very clear on exactly who I'm dealing with here. And actually how to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> At Josh, I've heard from Matt in his sit and talk that you expect to move to the bunker in April. Um, yeah, mid-April is the, the planned date to move in. And then uh, grand opening in June, July. Um, I haven't posted any of that stuff yet. I've got a good idea of what it is, but Dave's very excited about what he's doing with that, so I'm letting him be the one to talk about that. Um, how does that affect the content? Does it mean that there will be no videos in April till the grand opening? Really love your content. Keep being awesome. Happy Wargaming. I kind of talked on this one a little bit earlier. Um, the idea with the grand opening, like we'll move in and be able to produce videos pretty quickly, I think. The idea of the grand opening is just working out the kinks of the building and everything else. Um, so there should not be much of an interruption in content. I'm not thinking that there won't be somewhat of an interruption, but I'm going to try to minimize that as much as possible. So I can't really plan for it because I can't. I've got a rough plan of what I want it to look like. But until we actually start moving and I see what things don't go to plan, I can't say for sure what it's going to look like. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Next we got mistakes were made. Hey Josh, in the past few AOS bat reps, you mentioned you were looking for something other than Beast Call Raiders. Have any armies grabbed your attention? I can say in all honesty right now for Age of Sigmar, they have not. Um, there's a couple ones I was thinking of, but I typically like the lower model count armies. I find them a lot more fun to play, especially on camera. The Fire Slayers are fun, but they're exhausting to play at times. So I think I will reserve the Fire Slayers mostly for... Uh, repeat guests coming in because to have somebody come in give them a tour around get everything set up and everything figured out takes a while so I find sometimes when I play the fire slayers it's a little bit of a rush to get the game done if I'm playing with them because there's so many models to move so many roles to make um, which slow things down on camera now if it's my opponent doing it and playing them it's a little bit easier to but to go okay here's my armor save you know get all the dice ready roll the armor save and then usually cut the camera to pick all the dice back up again and go, there's the reroll on the armor save. Cut the camera, pick the dice up, and then, okay, here's the ignoring wounds. Yeah, all really that don't... adds up, it slows everything down. Yeah, you really don't want the... Because the, how, how many times do you pick up a handful of dice and then one falls out? It happens frequently, I find. Right. And it's just... Uh, it, it, it's annoying to constantly be doing that, and if it's all running clip, you... Just wanted to run as smoothly as possible, so. Yeah, they're not, they're not a great army, I think, to play. Um, if you're filming, especially filming with somebody the first time. And they can be annoying to play against. Mm -hmm. That being said, you know, when I play Age of Sigmar, uh, it's not that often. And I make it very clear to the guests, you know, Beast Claws are kind of what I know. But anytime people have had issues with them, which is very rare, um, I'll switch to another army. And it's usually my gut busters. True, true. Yeah. Gut busters or sometimes fire slayers. Now, I have a question for you, Josh. Can you scroll down to the bottom of the list? And is there a question from Necron Dawnbringer? Yes. Like second from the bottom? Yes. Okay. I just wasn't sure if the ask command was case sensitive. And if it was, I wanted to make sure that his question still got in. But He's all good. you can capitalize the A and it doesn't matter. So cool. Um, okay. So we're going to jump back over to some of the questions here on Twitch. Um, I'm very slowly catching up because you guys slowed them down. Thank you so much for that. No, ask more. Yeah, spam feel free spam. to start asking more now. You, you can kind of go crazy. I only have one more on the website I want to take care of. But I want to make sure everybody's questions get answered the best I can. Um, from Bamazer, has he put his snow tires on yet? Nope. Wait, why? He is not. Did you not hear the last time I answered this question? No, I blame Josh. Nope. 
Not at all. No, he has time to look up uh, Jello. No, no. Someone sent me that link on Amazon. But, I didn't look that up. <laughs> but 100 gallons of Jello was $99. Well, I'm sorry, $89. But American. So I assume it translates to somewhere around 100, $110 Canadian. Okay, next up we got Malicious91. Can you tell Dave not to change a thing? Nope. I'm going to tell him to change all the things. Every last one of them. Constantly. Did that just come out of the blue? I don't know what the, the context is. Okay. Or like, it's a question, so it's not a statement. So maybe he's asking like, like, am I capable of telling Dave not to change a thing? And yes, in that case, I am capable of it, but no. Keep him on his toes. Good for him. <laughs> Uh, so Will C Wills sixty five. How awesome was Half Dan? Um, of course, referring to uh, the Death Watch member. Oh, Half Dan. okay. I was like, who's Half a Dan? Uh, you know, Half Dan uh, will be remembered. Half Dan is awesome. Uh, Half Dan was the best. It's unfortunate, you know, what went down with Half Dan, and I will never forgive Luca for that. But that's okay. Next, we got Gorka Morka 41782. I guess Gorka Morka 41781 was taken. So, any plans to do more kill team bat reps, especially now that Arena is coming? There's no plans for it because um, I find that, um, again, it comes down to if we want to, because the schedule is uh, stretched pretty thin nowadays. If we want to add more stuff currently, we're probably going to have to slow down somewhere else. And there's not currently anything we are planning on slowing down on to introduce more kill team bat reps. Arena coming is kind of cool, um, and we'll see once that once that comes out how popular it is. If the people here start playing it, then maybe. But there's not currently kind of any plans for it because uh, what what I don't want to run into is us constantly chasing the new thing and not being able to keep up with it and not be able to give it its fair shake. So. Yeah, you won't really see us commit to something unless we can try to commit to it and commit to it consistently. Now, if it's, it's something that happens to be really popular with the studio here, like uh, the Lord of the Rings stuff, even though it's taken a while, we all collectively decided to start playing it even though the studio wasn't going to cover it. And now we're starting to film bat reps slowly but steadily. So that kind of stuff, um, you know, it's not really disrupting because I'm not having to have the guys not film so they can learn rule sets. Because um, again, it makes sense that, you know, if we're going to have somebody play a game, um, and that's part of their job, that they're going to learn the rule set on the clock. So it's a lot easier if we already know it. But yeah, uh, the kill team stuff, I don't know. Uh, nobody here seemed to really get their, their talons into it a whole lot and be super interested in it. That being said, um, who knows? If the game blows up and we start playing it more, maybe we'll do it. Arena looks very interesting, though. We got VJ Morph. Um, still planning on visiting... Uh, so, sorry. Still planning my mini wargaming visit. Looks like the 3rd to 4th of June will be the bunker be open for every eight stays by then. I can't actually say that for sure, VJ Morph. Your best bet is just keep in touch with me via the emails. And when I know, you'll guys know. Uh, you guys will know, but I can't say for now. Uh, next, we got the real Alfarius. The change to the bolters are nice, but still hasn't fixed Marines. What other changes would you make? <sighs> okay, so I am not in a position. I'm not a rules writer to tell you what changes they should make. Um, as a player, I can talk about the stuff that doesn't feel right, though. Um, I think that Marines overall, um, even though they're a jack-of-all-trades army and they always have been, there's still something that doesn't feel right. They're not elite enough. So the survivability isn't there for me. I don't know how to fix that, though. Because it's funny enough, Intercessors feel more proper than regular Marines having two wounds. So they are a little bit more survivable. Uh, Terminators, you know what, I think they should just go to a one-up save for Terminators at this point. Just make it a thing? Just, it's go back to a one-up save. Ones are still always a fail, but the idea is that even if they're shot at by something that's AP minus one, they still get a two-up save. Yep. They don't care. They're walking tanks. Um, as far as regular Marines on foot, I don't know, that's tough. 
Uh, I, th I think one of the issues right now is drop pods just are, there's, there's nothing special about them. I find I think, drop pods in all the, pretty much all the dedicated transports. Yeah. Kind of this way. Um, previously drop pods, you get some work done with drop pods. Nowadays, it's every army, including Marines, have a way to deep strike in units. Um, so they just don't have any role. So that whole, you know, the, the, the whole kind of hammer blow thing where Marines come in and shoot something off the board and, you know, you're, they have that flexibility. It's not there anymore. So they need to figure out what they can do to make Marines special and stand out. And a three-up save uh, with the way AP works nowadays isn't anything special. Uh, toughness four, no big deal because so many armies are super lethal. I don't know what they're going to have to do. But I think they need to do something about drop pods. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, Marines are in a rough spot with 8th edition right now. Yeah, that's a toughie. Uh, we got the Black Phoenix. I'm looking to take my Marines. Actually, you're going to have to help me with this one, Colin. 1430-43. Looking to take my Marines. I bought with Dark Imperium and convert them over to Death Watch. What is the best way to convert the... Gravis Captain over to a Watch Captain? Um, I mean, pretty much, because I don't know... I don't even know if Death Watch... I assume they have access to the Gravis Captains. I've never used one, so I've never, I've never been interested, so I've never looked into it. Pretty much, it's just the swapping the shoulder pad. Now, I believe with the Dark Imperium stuff that you'd have to carve off the shoulder pads. So the way I've done that in the past is you just take the little uh, sprue cutter. Games Workshop one is what I use, but any whatever you're using to cut things off sprue should work. And you have to kind of just trim the existing molded on shoulder pad off and keep just trimming little bit by little bit until you can fit the Death Watch shoulder pad on top of where it used to be. But as far as anything else, that's all you got to do is put the Death Watch shoulder pad on them and you're 95% of the way there. And then if you want to do a war gear swap or anything else like that. But yeah, just trim that shoulder pad down and put on, uh, it'd be one of the Terminator shoulder pads for the Death Watch. Which if you're playing Death Watch, I assume you have those shoulder pads laying around. All right. Pick next. We got flip mode SH. As I watch this, I'm assembling Easterlings. Has Cullen stopped making excuses? Haha, <laughs> excuses, excuses. Um, no, I. Yeah. So, DJ Misfire, have you stopped making excuses? I, if I was to respond, it would only be another excuse. There you go. That's what I thought it would be. Okay, I'm going to jump over here. We're going to do the last question from the website. This is a long one from Zerga Lurgaderg. It's a multiple parter. I'm going to do my best to read this uh, appropriately. Or do you want to do you want to take a crack at it, Colin? Uh, not especially. It's super are you, long, and are I'm you sure? pretty dyslexic, so I don't want to butcher uh, all of his work he spent typing out that beautiful comment. Okay, let's see if I can say it properly. <sighs> Hail Mini Wargaming Josh, smiter of tiny demons, hurler of dirty snowballs, defender of the Imperial Creed, bearded commander of the North, whose defiance of Mother Nature is proudly displayed upon his sandaled feet. I beseech thee to share thine enlightened thoughts about a query stated thusly. As the creators at the workshop of games have seen fit to elevate the efficacy of his Holy Emperor's bolt throwers, so that they may smote foes more appropriately. If thine own will could be pressed to serve in a similar function, what, pray tell, similar changes would you deem fit to implement? Um, so yeah, uh, upgrading Marines. We talked about it a little bit already. Uh, you gotta do something about drop pods, make them useful again. I don't know how you're gonna do that. Because um, it doesn't make sense to take stuff away from other armies to make that one better. But yeah, drop pods are useless right now. Um, like I said, Terminators, I don't get all the answers, but they're terrible still. The Bolter beta rules help out their lethality a little bit, but they still die too easy. Um, excuse me. So like I said, uh, get them to a one-up save. Let them ignore some of that AP. 
I think that could work. Uh, your Bolter Marines on the ground, I don't know. The, the thing about Marines for me is that they were always, like I said, a good flexible kind of force. Um, but they've been more and more kind of pushed into being a shooting army, I find. Um, and this is pushing them further in that direction. The thing for Marines for me is that they were always super flexible. Um, so, you know, if you're playing against a shooting army, you just take them into close combat. So I don't know how they would boost or give abilities or things like that. Cutting out the initiative stat is kind of a big deal. Um, Cause that was where Marines kind of could shine a bit in close combat over, you know, uh, guardsmen and things like that. Cause they had the initiative bonus, so they get to swing first. So I don't know, it's it's tough. They just don't feel like these elite superhumans, they're, they're barely better um, than some of the other stuff. Like, uh, without much effort, if I was playing the uh, Catechins, I could easily get them, their strength four, I could get them to probably three, four attacks without much effort, and he would just beat up a Space Marine. And that just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't make sense. So, um, I think giving the Bolters more shots is a good way to go but they need to do something to make them feel like that shock trooper army again like they used to. And granted, this is going way back. And they just, yeah, they don't have that feel anymore. There's no reason to really play Marines other than the fact that everybody has them. And they're in every cheap starter set. And the second part of the question. A second boon of your insight, I humbly beg. Thrice in a short time have sons of the emperor walked again in the realm of the two score millennium. If thine will be done, whom would be thine own choice to ascend once more? Um, I've said it multiple times. Give me back Dorn. He will fix this situation. He's not this silly rowboat going around starting crusades and that don't go anywhere and, you know, doing all this silly stuff with, uh, uh, the ad mech and these primaries marines. Give me Dorn back. He'll get this done. I think that would be super cool. Uh, I think uh, uh, a modern 40k interpretation of Dorn would be super cool. Um, and he would be my pick by far. That might actually force me. That that would actually probably convince me to start playing my Imperial Fists in 40k instead of just 30k. That would probably be what it would take. Uh, that'd be cool. I need to think about that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna jump back over to Twitch, and we're gonna continue questions here until uh, I don't know until I decide we're done. Do you want me to close the window? Are you getting cold, little fellow? I fella? am freezing. Oh, you can close the window if you want to. Okay, cool. Are you Canadian? Yes, but it's so freaking cold in here. It's like it's, it's like minus one outside right now, Colin. It's not cold. Yeah, but you're not sitting right next to the window. Every time I'm at a computer, I'm you always... You've got a little sweater and all that on. Right next to the computer. I apologize for the interruption due to Cullen's weak constitution. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Zerga Lurga Derg, there he is. Uh, hey, Josh, if you invent a whole new weapon to be in 40K, what would it be and what would it do? Ooh. Uh, hmm. So the concept of inventing a new weapon for 40k is kind of, that's techno heresy. We gotta, we gotta redo the old weapons. Uh, I would love to see them take a 40k stance on uh, Volkite. Ooh. Bring back some Volkite weapons. Because we, we know the Admech has limited access to some old Volkite stuff. Um, so let's see them start mass manufacturing Volkite weapons again. Back before, you know, pre-heresy. Arguably before the, the, the Great Crusade. Uh, that would be super cool. Give me some modern Volkite rules. Actually, that could be super cool. I think that would also make playing 30k armies and 40k a little easier. Yeah. If, if Volkite weapons actually existed, so you didn't always have to make them count as. I just do count as plasma for mine, but... Yeah. You know what? Yeah, you know what? Maybe that might be the fix for Marines. Is You know, in the lore... Uh, take the, I, I know they went the Primaris route and here's these new guys with these fancy new weapons. Let's start mass manufacturing some of the old stuff. Let's, let's get, uh, you know, 
Because Hell Blasters exist. How come there's not special weapon support squads like there was in 30k? Okay, yeah, yeah. So if they're able to mass manufacture these giant Hell Blaster weapons, how come you're not mass manufacturing standard plasma guns and changing the doctrines of the Marines? Because uh, they could probably manufacture them, but I was really hoping, you know, um, they would just throw out the Codex Astartes because it hasn't really worked too well up until now and go back to more of a crusade kind of feel. That would be that would be cool. That would get me kind of hmm. maybe uh, reinvested in Marines in the 40K universe. So yeah, not inventing a new, whole new weapon. Uh, let's bring back some of the older weapons and specifically those good old Martian death rays. Do you know what rules you would have them be? Straight five, assault two. Um, and probably pr probably pretty similar to the 30k rules where there's the chance that um, for every wound you cause to something, uh, you get to throw another wound roll in. Okay. So, so yeah, every wound that goes through, uh, you make another wound roll. Interesting. Okay. Because that could just erase certain squads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be do pretty well taking out infantry units and yep. things like that. And strength five is pretty scary in this game system, I think. Um, that, that could be good. Mm -hmm. You'd have to give them something. See, here's the thing. So here's the whole thing with the AP system is that it's it's closer to the way it should be. But when I used to shoot, uh, you know, guardians or guardsmen or stuff with my bolters, they're AP five. They they died. They didn't get an armor save. But now mm -hmm. they get a five of armor save. So a lot of these armies that have weak armor are suddenly a lot more resilient. So three up armor is not what it used to be at all. It doesn't feel right anymore. No, and it doesn't, and it wouldn't be the same as just making it have more AP because then that affects everything else so heavily that right. that strong armor would not be good. And that's another reason to go back to your thing of one up saves for terminators. Yep, that I think is a big deal there. Well, that's, I think, part of why I like playing the Death Watch, because the lore is cool, but they feel like Marines should. Like, they're they're very elite, and the weaponry is pretty lethal. The, you know, the... Because it... Excuse me, a Death Watch bolter with extended range and AP-1, it's not game-breaking by any means. Nope. But it does kill stuff dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you don't have AP on your weapons, you definitely feel it. You definitely can notice the difference. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, next, we got Catfish666. Josh, do you and your wife play any board games or miniature wargaming? Um, she is less than interested in miniature wargaming. <laughs> uh, she doesn't dislike it by any means, but she has no real interest in playing. It's not something she enjoys. And board games, we play certain board games, but um, any of the real long haul stuff, she's not a big fan of. So it's not like we're going to sit down with people and play Twilight Imperium. Um, but, uh, oh, uh, Pandemic. We played a bunch of Pandemic, and we enjoy playing Pandemic. And other games like that. Um, the, the name of all of them escaped me at this time. But yeah, she's a fan of uh, games like that. Uh, next up, we got Balfour. Now, I'm starting to get caught up in questions, folks. So if you want to throw more in there, uh, now's your chance to. Colin, uh, you are... Well, okay, DJ Misfire. When are we going to shut down the... Um, you make that decision when we're going to shut down the question intake. So, I mean, okay, so we've been on... It's an hour and 22 that we've been live. We probably put the countdown up for, what, 14 minutes? So, math. Uh, we can say, if you get your questions in by... I don't want to say 3.15. That's, I feel like five minutes. So let's go another 10 minutes of questions if, if we so can, you've got until if we can stay, sustain that. If we can sustain it, then you get until 3.20 to get your questions in. Then we're shutting them down. But I'm willing to stay and answer questions as long as I need to. Okay, so we got Belfour. So, Josh, when are we going to run a narrative campaign? Or when am I going to run a narrative campaign? Be a 30K campaign, right? Um, hopefully soon. Again, with the role I'm currently in, it's tough for me to schedule narrative campaigns. Um, I've talked to a couple different groups. So... I would want to run a, because the two that are floating around in my mind right now, that hopefully I would receive support for, <laughs> um, you know, like people would be, uh, they, they would enjoy the content. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to run a Victory's Vengeance campaign. 
Van Gans? I think Van Gans. I think we can do that um, with guests if I had the right crew of 30k guests. And that would be probably off the top of my head, and I'm not meaning to hurt any feelings, but the Malik crew would probably be the best one to do it with because there's a bunch of them that all play 30k. Yes. And they've been on the regular. They're a very flexible guy, uh, group of guys. I think we could do something with that. And I'm not saying that there wouldn't be other groups out there that would be fantastic, but I'm talking about to plan a narrative campaign because we would have to use guests. I would need people that I have u- have had in before. And there's a certain level of expectation from both sides on how things will work. I could do it with them. Mm-hmm. So, Victory's Vengeance, up there. I want to do is Victory's Vengeance. Uh, the last one we did didn't do great. But I will say I think part of that is due to the fact that not everybody was super into it. Okay. So I think with the right crew, that could be very successful. And I want to do a Titan Death campaign sooner rather than later. Um, but I've been in talks with a group of uh, guys about doing a Titan Death campaign. Ooh. So the way that that one works, because here's, here's my take on campaigns. And it's different than the way we do things normally. For the most part. And Colin, you, I'll, I'll bounce this off you, and then you guys can talk and chat about it too, obviously. And I like campaigns where they're less positive. So the idea of you know an army going out, a force going out, or something like that, that the goal is not trying to upgrade. Mm-hmm. The goal is trying to maintain your forces, your supplies, and everything else the best you can. Okay. So that's where I look at something like Death Watch. It's a ton of fun, and there's the chance that guys can die. But when guys die, guys get replaced, and your team gets better throughout the campaign, no matter how bad you do. Yep. You get new war gear. You get tons of experience. Your team gets better. With a system like Victory is Vengeance, very rarely are you actually are your forces getting stronger. It's about maintaining your manpower, your firepower, and everything else, and just trying to kind of wear down your opponent. So uh, I look at something like Titan Death, where the, the the basics of the campaign system, from what I've seen thus far, is you, you build a roster of Titans, and there's permanent damage that happens to them. Like, you've got to repair them between games. Interesting. And there's circumstances where you might... where where like your first engagement is probably going to be your most effective one. Everybody's, you know, got all the ammo they need. Everybody's running at tip-top condition. And from there on out, you have to do your best to not take too many losses. Yeah. Because it affects the way that you play, which helps drive a narrative for me. Yeah, that's true. Because, yeah, when when, when there's no real There's no consequences. consequences. There's no proper consequences. And you can just be overly aggressive in in a, again, in a way that kind of skews it in a non-narrative fashion. Correct. Because in in real life, why people wouldn't make certain decisions of, okay, well, you guys are just going to run out there and die. But again, in in single one-off games, there's no consequences. You might have to once in a while, but that shouldn't be the go-to. But typically that's to probably save... Something else from taking a significant amount of damage, right? Right. So that's the thing is I got to look at that and go, am I going to play risky with that Warlord? Because I'm going to need him throughout the rest of the campaign. I can't afford to throw him away early. Like I need to be kind of protective of my forces. That's the stuff I enjoy. Mm-hmm. But I know not everybody likes that because if you look at like, the Death Watch campaign and stuff, people get so upset when a character dies off. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing is it's it's the right audience too. So just because I really enjoy that and that's the stuff I like to watch doesn't mean everybody else likes it. For sure, for sure. And I mean, if yeah, I, I know that it sucks when people die in those campaigns, but if if nobody died, then there would be no consequences. And unless somebody right. actually dies, then the weight you kind of need those things to affect how things work or without it, it just kind of feels weightless or yeah. meaningless. And don't get me wrong, I like the way we do a lot of things and all that, but I really like having to make difficult decisions that affect the ongoing mm-hmm. campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where certain game systems I'm a really big fan of. So I would like to play in one of those campaigns or run one of those campaigns where it's kind of, it's it's because we're playing a war game, right? Things are gritty. Um, Good things don't happen, you know. It's it's one of those, um, you know, the, the 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 positive things in the campaign is at least it wasn't that negative. Yes, that's that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, so yeah, 
that's what I'm going for is I want to do a Titan Death campaign and I want to do a Victory's Vengeance. Um, they're up there, but I got to have the right crew of people. So that might be stuff that happens after the bunker. I don't know. I can't say for sure. Yeah, with, with things like that, having the bunker because then it allows guests to stay on site and a little bit more easily that getting them in for a couple days and that kind of stuff. So it's a, I would feel like it might be easier to accommodate once that's all up and it running. It would be. And like I said, you've got to find the right group of people when it comes to stuff like this because they're going to be in multiple episodes. Right. And especially with the style that I'm talking about because you got to be willing to say to people like, hey, you know, you might really get screwed over game one and it might really negatively impact your enjoyment of the rest of the campaign. But you're signing up for this. This is what you're here for. Yeah. A certain level of there's there there's you can be salty up to a point, but when it gets to being right beyond that, then when it starts to affect the quality of the video and that kind of thing. And for me, it's the the, the guest experience because I mean, yeah. a, a major part of what I do is making sure that people have a good time when they come in. Um, and it would be really depressing for me if you know somebody signed up for something like that and they didn't fully understand what they were getting into. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't really understand how much it might bum them out to, you know, get beat up in a campaign. And for them to come all the way from like Australia or something, you know, for a week, like that's not a cheap thing to do to no. fly and then stay somewhere. Um, I'm much more comfortable putting this idea forward to people I've met before. Yep. And I talk about the, the, the crew that Malik usually comes up with, uh, like Malik, Sam, Alex, uh, Dan, and the rest of them. I feel like I can that that I wouldn't feel bad if somebody was having you know some rough luck. Uh, you knew you guys knew what you were getting into, and that's that's okay. I wouldn't want to do that to somebody I'm meeting for the first time. Correct. Yep. Um, two minutes left in the question queue, just so everyone knows. Okay, let's go left. fast. Okay, the next one you're gonna have to help me with this. Fourteen forty nine oh three Necron Dawnbringer. Forty nine. Yes. So hi Josh, I'm subscribed to the Warhammer Conquest magazine. And I'm planning on converting the Space Marines I receive into Death Watch. Any tips on doing shoulders? Email me on it so I can just make sure. Because I don't know what Marines you're getting. So all it comes down to, like, email me either way and we'll talk about it. Because I'm more than happy to help you through this. I'm assuming he means, like, they're probably snap fit. If they're kind snap fit, yeah. If the shoulder pads are molded on, the easiest way to do it is you go nice and slow, you take a, a pair of uh, sprue clippers, you trim a little bit off, you see how a shoulder pad fits on. You trim a little off, you keep going like that. If they're not snap fit, if the, if the shoulder pad isn't already on, then and that's yeah, you're, cool, you're super fine. easy. And I assume you're talking about the death watch shoulder pad, not the chapter shoulder pad. Right, Because exactly. that could be different too. Exactly. And in that one, I'm more than happy to give you some resources to make use of to find some really cool chapters. But yeah, email me on that one because um, you're probably not going to have time to get the question in by the time I'm reading this now. Um, Josh at MiniWarGaming.com. I'm always more than happy to, to answer emails people send as long as you realize it might take me a little while to get back to you. Uh, the Snot Smasher. <laughs> what a name. That's a good one. Uh, Josh, what's your thoughts on the divisive new Nurgle Rodders Pestigors? I, I haven't paid much attention to them. You um, can close the queue now, Josh, whenever you feel Okay, it's happening. Oh, I lost it already. Ooh. I'm ruining everything. Quick, get your questions in. Josh, Josh and here things. goes. Close. Wah, wah. Uh, the Nurgle, Nurgle Pestigors. Pestigors. Cullen and I are both looking them up. Are they just no good? What did you look up? I looked up Nurgle Pestigors and it asked me, and asked me if I wanted to translate this page. It is I put in Nurgle Pestigor and it's just the Nurgle Rotters Pestigors. Oh. Whoa. Is it a Blood Bowl? Yeah, yeah. Is this it? Is that what a Pestigor is? Is it this? Is it the thing I'm looking at? Yeah, okay. So here's what you need to do, Colin. You need to find the team profile Nurgle's Rotters um, on Warhammer Community. These creepy things? No, 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 no. There you, okay. 
Find the actual page I'm talking about because that's the only way you're going to get it. Theme profile is not old. Okay, so scroll down. Keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling down. There you go. You went past him. Ooh. What is going on with his face? That's. That's ugly. That's. Yeah, that's horrifying. To the point of I'm going to save this and see if I can bring it up on stream for everybody to see how terrifying it is. Oh. Let's see if I can do this. This is my first. I uh, know I've done this live, I guess, before, but yeah, uh, that was that was uh, awful. Uh, they're pretty ugly, but whatever. Um, hmm. That's all I have to say is hmm. Oh, I'm it's up gonna, on stream now. Oh, it, oh, oh uh, <laughs> what noise would it make? I have no idea. That was the sound I was making. Thinking. Yeah, that was just calling noises. I don't know. It's got like a beak, so it's like a bird noise. I don't know. Wait, is that the thing you guys are talking about? That thing's super ugly. But whatever. It's Nurgle. It fits, I guess. If it wasn't ugly, I, there, there, there's a whole different. Yes, I do want to remove it. Boom. Why did it fade? Do I not have my fade transition going? Hmm. Wow, that's that's amateur hour over there, Colin. I know, right? No fade transition. I know. Okay, continuing on here, we got Mechasonic nine thousand. How picky are you with paint schemes? Well, my guard paint being random, squads painted the same be an issue. I don't know what you mean by that. Like, random every, squads painted the same. Does it, I wonder if every squad got its own color scheme? You know oh, I mean? oh, like every unit. This is blue squad. This is a red squad. Now, I don't know if you're talking about me personally or the studio. As long as they're, you know, painted appropriately, that's cool. If they're, if they're all the same level. I think what it comes down to most of the time is, like, for something like that, if you did it on purpose and you have a reason why uh, in the lore, if it's the lore of your army, sure. If it was that you bought them from 10 different random eBay lots and they're all different levels of painting and there's no... There's no unified basing or anything else. Yeah. And ten different styles. We might be less okay with that. But I always tell people you can email me to make sure too. Um, Josh at miniwargaming.com. Uh, shoot me the email. Show me some pictures of what you're talking about, and I can kind of make a call on it. Yeah. Again, I, I, I think you're right with the having the u unified look there. That is a, a big thing. That yeah, they can be all over the place, but yep. And if that's the if that's how you painted them. That's the lore of it, and that makes sense. Cool. Oh, Black Wolfie U96. Subscribe with a tier one sub. Thank wow. You. Black Wolfie name, I can't remember. Thank you for subscribing for two months in a row. You're awesome. Uh, that's super cool. And it showed up on screen, so everyone saw it before I said it. But nice. It actually worked. I just need to get the sound notification working, potentially, maybe. Whoa. Now we got Muckrar and the brands. Also, subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you guys so much. You now have access to the cool mini wargaming guy emote. Boop, boop, boop. Alrighty, so we got, uh, you're going to help me with this one here, Colin. 1456.27 from Desroin. 56. Will you throw in some smaller systems from time to time that can be played with miniatures you have available, like Song of Blades and Heroes? To see if that might interest people. Now, I don't, is it Song of Blades and Heroes? Is that one game? Or is it Song of Blades and then, I don't know if that's and then a the, game called Heroes? I assume that's the... I wonder if that's the um, Game of Thrones one. Is that the Fire and Ice? I don't know. I don't know. If they, they got a miniatures game. I don't know what they called it, though. Aaron's saying it's one game and someone's flipping a table. So, with that sort of stuff... Um, if there's the opportunity for it, right? So, the difficult thing is... Yeah, pretty, I thought the Game of Thrones was Song of Ice and Fire. That's, that's, well, that's what it's called. Is that what they call the game, too? Go ahead and search it. Like, Yeah, Song of Ice and I... Ice and Sire? <laughs> for, mm, Song Maybe. of Fire and Ice is the Game of Thrones game. So, what's which, which this one? Song of Blades and Heroes? Song of Blades and Heroes. With that sort of stuff, it kind of depends. Um, if it's a game that some of us are playing, we have the time, sure. Um, but right now, like I said, with the way the schedule works and the, the amount of resources, when I talk resources, I talk about, you know, how many staff I have to film with and everything else. Um, 
we can't really add a whole lot of new stuff without taking away old stuff. If that changes, I could see us, instead of just adding in like more random 40K or Age of Sigmar or whatever else, I'd like to see us branch off into some other game systems and give them a try every once in a while. But right now, just we can't do it without taking away from the core stuff of what we do. But in a roundabout way, look at what Matt's doing with the uh, live stream roleplay stuff. That's us branching off in one direction. Um, so if that becomes a main part of the company, we might have to increase resources overall to make sure that we have the capability to maintain that, which means that maybe we can branch off into something else after that. So right now, I guess the, the branch off is the RPG stuff, and eventually it might become branching off into other game systems too, smaller systems. I'd love to go down that route, but again, I gotta consider what's you know best for the, the company and the current viewer base. Yep, and VJ Morph just subscribed with uh, Twitch Prime for uh, second month in a row. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, okay, just a quick little description of Songs of Blade and Heroes for anyone who doesn't who know. Who makes it? This is, Aaron said it's by Ganesh Games. Okay. If that's anything familiar to you. Songs of Blades and Heroes is a fast play skirmish level fantasy miniature game. It uses action point system that requires no bookkeeping. The rules are designed to be simple, fast, and fun so that the mini campaign of several games can be played in a single evening. The game uses only six sided dice and requires approximately five to ten models per game. The rules recommend 15 millimeter figures on a 60 by 60 centimeter play area, but can be played at other scales. Uh, there is nothing scaled in inches or there is nothing scaled in inches or centimeters. Three measuring sticks that measure distances and ranges. Alternatively, the game okay. can be played without measuring sticks on a hex grid. So, so, it's, yeah, so I mean, it seems like a like small skirmish level encountering style game. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, with that sort of stuff, sure. What it usually requires is multiple content producers interested or an existing community. So I can be very blunt in the fact I say right now, like um, if I had the resources, excuse me, uh, like the film time to be able to do it, and there was a existing community of at least probably 12 to 15 regular players, I would do Bolt Action or uh, Team Yankee in a heartbeat. Should be like, no, we're doing this now. And add that onto the repertoire. It just, I can't do that now without taking away from somewhere else. But again, the hope is that when we get into the bunker, we got the gaming space there, we can start to build up various gaming communities, both for 40K, Age of Sigmar, systems we're already doing, plus some of the other stuff. And that'll allow us to get more regular content of these other game systems. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Sergeant Rolf, hey Josh, do you have any ideas on how to balance games between a good and mediocre player? Uh, this is 1459, you might need to help me with this. 1459.20, Sergeant Rolf. I'm a higher level than some of my friends, but... Still want to create a fun evening game without play bad on purpose. Without playing bad on purpose. Right, so... I have, because I have this conversation with pretty much all my uh, folks I film with and uh, people I help teach games to, I don't believe in dumbing down your own play so the game is closer. That being said, I don't believe in going out and thrashing somebody either. I think it's important for the, the if, you, if, you're, if you're playing against your buddies and you happen to be a better player than them, uh, you want to, you want to, bring them up as much as you can, right? Um, so usually when it comes to situations like that, I make it very clear to my opponent of, you know, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play how I normally play, but I'm gonna do my best to explain everything to you. And if you have any questions, you need to ask. As far as why did I take this and not that, why am I, you know, what are the tactics going on here? Um, help them understand how you play and help them figure out how to beat you. Because that'll create kind of a more fun play group. Because once you can, you know, get your, your regular opponents in a position where it's a good 50-50 fight, well then you're going to have to elevate your tactics to be able to beat them. Which means that they're going to have to elevate their own. 
so yeah, as far as dumbing down, usually doesn't work for me. Um, playing with simpler stuff is different than dumbing down because I don't like the idea of making bad plays on purpose. But you can always dumb down your list. So I'd say, yeah, I guess maybe dumb down your list more than your play style and make sure that your opponent is having fun and learning. And that, you know, uh, will work for most of the people I tend to get along with when I teach games and all that stuff too. Yeah, one of my um, biggest things I would say is also try to prevent putting them in like the gotcha kind of situations. Yeah, you should never do a gotcha moment too. Like never, you, you never really want to do that when you're playing somebody new or get them on, oh, well this is actually how this rule works or... Uh, you, you didn't understand I had this stratagem which neutralizes your strategy and I tricked you into exposing this unit now you can't, you know. That stuff, absolute garbage play. That shouldn't exist on any level of play. I think one of my, my favorite stories of this of all time is my first game of Magic the Gathering ever. Okay. I, yep. was, I was playing with my friend who was, I, I think I had, this was my first like solo, play, me playing by myself without somebody looking over the shoulder. Yep. And you know, you, you're attacking with your things and you know, he, he looks at me and he's like, oh, you should probably attack with all your things and you put me at one, you know, one life. And I was like, sure. And then he immediately plays Sunblast Angel, which kills all tapped creatures. Yep. Destroy. And I was so angry. And to this day, it's still my least favorite card that exists because of that moment. Now, granted, that didn't turn me off from playing because it was friends and we were in high school and whatever. But now I curb stomp him at every available Good. moment. You know what, man? <laughs> the, the, that kind of stuff happens from time to time. And if that's, if, if that's how your opponent enjoys learning, is being put into situations like that, mm -hmm. cool. I think that's a fine line to tread. And that being said, um, if I ever encounter people and that's the type of player they are, where um, they, they, they purposely go after uneducated newer players and trick them into doing stuff like that so they can get a higher win ratio that nobody cares about. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like that. That's, that's bad for the community overall. For sure. Granted, some people learn that way, but especially if you're playing somebody for the first time. Yep. Because I remember, okay, so when Steve and I started, uh, you know, when, when I started coming in here to play against Steve, Yep. Because um, I was coming in to play against Chris on the regular, then I met Steve, and I was helping Steve learn War, War Machine. Machine? Yes. War Machine, yeah. And so we played a couple games, we kind of got a sense of each other, and he said he wanted to get better. And so he was the one that was very open about the fact, he's like, I don't want you to pull any punches, go all out, don't baby me through anything, mm -hmm. don't answer questions I don't ask, yep. and just thrash me over and over and over again. Because it's, it's how he wanted to learn. And so sure, that was appropriate in that setting. Mm -hmm. But again, we were already kind of buddies and... Yeah, and then there, there's... That definitely, I think, helps in certain scenarios, especially when you know the basics and you want to learn the more gritty, grindier rules. But especially yep. when you're trying to just get somebody to be aware of the basics of a game, that kind of stuff is really meh. Yep. And I mean, like... Because I'll tell my opponents, especially if I'm meeting them for the, for the first time, because there's stress playing on camera, right? That sometimes they'll make moves and off camera I'll say, mm, are you sure you want to do that? And the conversations happen before the game of, you know, if you're making a really bad play, how much do you want me to point it out? Yep. Um, I had a fellow the other day I was playing against. Super good game. And he was playing Grey Knights, and he was going for a uh, Vortex of Doom. Because it was it's Mortal Wounds doing more damage. Mm -hmm. And it does Mortal Wounds to things in an aura around it as well. He said he was going to do it. Okay. Beep, beep. And I double check it, see how it works. And uh, I said, are you sure you want to do that? Because this was a game that, you know, he was experienced enough. He said, don't, you know, if, if something's really off, maybe point it out. Yep, but it'll be overly obvious. So are you sure you want to do that? Yeah. And it went through it a couple times before he finally did it. I'm like, go reread what it does, because he didn't realize it affected uh, both friendly and enemy units. Oh, I see. So he almost Vortex of Doomed a bunch of his own stuff off the board to do minimal damage to my stuff. Yeah. That kind of stuff. And I mean, like, um, 
when somebody's coming in to play a game on camera, well, that can just ruin the whole thing. You know, you're overly excited. You're playing in a weird place. It's the weird pacing of the game because it's on camera. Mm -hmm. That sort of stuff. Maybe you don't feel like you have the time to check your book because often just those kind of things yeah. too, right? But the same in point. a different scenario in a different environment. Right. And again, somebody I'm playing for the first time or I'm not buddies with, I'm, I'll point it out. I'm not going to go, oh, you're such an idiot. This is why you're <laughs> exactly. such an idiot. Um, if I'm playing as a buddy, then totally that's what I'm going to say. But whatever. That's not to mention that these are filmed games that then go up on the internet and yep. there's an internet comment section and things like that. So Yeah. But then again, like when, a, when David White comes in and makes a bad play, uh, that's, that's on him. <laughs> that's not my problem. You enjoy those comments, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think the, the, the best thing is try to elevate people to your play level instead of dumbing your own play level down. Because if somebody's a mediocre player, if they play against you making bad decisions in game, they're not going to learn anything. Yep. You know? For sure. And... I always say when I play people, obviously on camera here at the post-game chat, but I always give people the opportunity after the game. I'm like, if you want to ask any questions, feel free. Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of the times, like, playing certain armies here, I'll leave a squad, you know, hanging out in the wind a bit as bait to try to get people to do stuff. And sometimes they realize it, sometimes they don't. So it's funny, too, because we've, we've had people come in and play against me. And then, you know, they'll ask me, why did you do this and that? And I say, go back and watch the game because I'm trying to pull, I'm trying to make you make bad decisions on where you place your stuff. I'm trying to trick you into putting stuff in bad spots so I'll win. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff, right? Da-da-da-da. Enough rambling about that. Uh, Heronzo, what rules, design, implementation from 30K would you put into 40K that you think would improve 40K? Um, all of them. <laughs> Uh, if you, I honestly, I'm going to answer this the other way around because I think it's going to be way easier. If you took the 30 K rules that currently exist and you put the 40 K rules for piling in where it's just closer to the closest model and it wasn't Mm -hmm. so weird and finicky, um, then we're good. Done. Just piling in. That's the only part of the game where I'm like, this is kind of sloppy and weird. Uh, uh, Piling in. And pulling casualties from wherever you want. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, and otherwise, yeah, that's that's what I would do. I'm a big fan of how 30K flows overall. The ones that kind of prevent you from just having to be like, well, this is half an inch and this is three quarters of an inch. Because it's, <laughs> it's not so much I'm bothered by the way that the pylon works for 30K or that, you know, pulling casualties is the closest. Because that's not terrible. Actually, because I'll touch on that in a second. It just slows down play a whole lot sometimes. When people yep. are like, oh, it's trying to protect characters and, and special weapons. and Just move your stuff. Mm-hmm. If they made it so that you had to remove the closest models only during Overwatch, I'd be down for that. Okay. Yep. That, yep, would be that cool. makes sense. Because it affects your charge distance. For sure. That would be cool. I would keep that. Um, and yep, just sometimes the piling in is kind of... That's the one I find for 30k players. Usually it's the double check of the rulebook of how does this work exactly again? Mm-hmm. But other than that, yeah, super happy with how 30k is. I love a lot of things about 40k, but I've got my game system I prefer. Uh, flip mode SH. Never thought about drop pods before. How about let them drop within 9 but cannot charge out of them? Or charge out of them. I, I, I don't really know for drop pods. There's going to be something that makes them unique and cool. Yeah. Maybe there's uh, maybe there's a randomization to it of um, how close you can get. Yeah, without the scatter die, I guess that makes that kind of. Maybe they've got to be. Uh, they start nine inches away, but there's some way to make them be able to get closer. Maybe there's a stratagem you pop or something like that that allows you to get closer. Okay. Yeah. Bring the stratagem into it a little bit more. Because that's the whole idea, is that these things drop down, all of a sudden you're getting killed by space marines. Oh, for sure. Um, that being said, I've always talked about how game balance is important to me, but rule of cool narrative lore play is way more important to me. So if marines are super overpowered, sure, they're supposed to be in the fluff, so whatever. I know that that might ruin stuff for competitive play, but that's the division between match play and organized play. You know, I've already 
beat that dead horse enough in other times I've talked about it. Uh, da, 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 da. Army 1917, Josh is joining here. Excited for what the Bolter, Beta Bolter did for your Death Watch. Super excited. I'm excited to see how it starts to play out. They're a really finicky, unique little army. Um, and yeah, there's definitely some stuff I want to try with them. Uh, Andrew Octobeard, Colin, you're going to have to help me with this one a little bit. 150848. Uh, hey, Josh, I know most players really don't like the Blood Ravens, but they introduces, but they introduced me to this awesome lore and game. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think of them? What relic would you gift to the chapter? Um, yeah, I, I had no problem with the Blood Ravens. Uh... I mean, they were never one of my favorites because the whole connections to the Thousand Suns, and I couldn't care less about the Thousand Suns. And I've always really kind of not cared about Psychers for 40k. Like, I, I love the the lore of them, but I've never really been introduced, uh, uh, sorry, um, wanting to introduce them to my army, like to include them in. So I think they're cool. It's super cool that, that they got you into the game. I'm assuming it's because you played... Um, Dawn of War. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah they're pretty cool. Uh, I got no issues with them. Uh, the librarian for my Death Watch is a Blood Raven. But uh, overall, yeah. They're just not one of the cooler chapters for me personally. I just like different styles of chapters. Uh, Cax Tan. What's the next narrative campaign RPG you'll be in? I can't say for sure. Uh, I, I very much hope to be in the um, next RPG show we do. Um, but who knows? I'm more than happy to play whatever and fill whatever role I need to fill. Space Shark 7. Josh, your thoughts on Terminator's 3-up save on two dice and either ignore or minus 1 AP or their save can go beyond 6-up. Yeah, I mean, the, the, definitely the, the the only thing for me that I don't like about the, the idea of the two dice for Terminators is um, it kind of breaks the regular rules that everybody else uses, which will slow down play overall. The same I've seen, you know, roll two dice and you pick which one you keep. Cool. It just kind of slows things down a little bit. I think if you're going that route, the better way to do it would probably... Uh, be a re-rollable save. Which could be another cool thing for Terminators, is give them a re-rollable save. Again, it slows down the game a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of that mechanic, but the feel no pain re-rollable save thing, it's worked in the past. I think it'll work just fine. Uh, Zergalurgadur, Cullen, you're going to help me out. 1512. So here's the big question. Primarch Battle Royale. Each as they were at the beginning of the Crusade. No demon shenanigans, and only melee weapons? Weapons are allowed. Who wins? That's tough. Um, I mean, they've all got their own kind of things, but in a straight-up fair fight, I think your top picks would be... Angron would be way up there. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, Angron would be way, way up there. Uh, Russ would be way up there. And uh, the Khan mm. would be there too. I think those are the, those are my top three picks. If it was a betting man, it would be on one of those three. And yeah, I don't know. I think uh, the Khan would be super interesting. I think he might be the one. I don't know, we're receiving some... Fulgrim could be... Ful no, no. I wouldn't put a Fulgrim in my top three. I think any of those three would beat him up. Are we getting, are we getting some comments on that Yeah, we, we would get some Dorn. Someone said, Josh, please. Got be it. Sanguinius. Ah, uh, Sanguinius. Yeah. Rust. I said Rust. Sanguinius, maybe. 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 Good one, because he flies. Meh. <laughs> uh, Dorn, as much as I love Dorn, for. he's my favorite. Uh, nope. He, he's good in a fight, but... In a straight up kind of gladiatorial type thing, I wouldn't put him above any of those three that I said. We have somebody saying Vulcan is a tank, but yeah, because that, that that's the thing is, is how much are we evaluating them for their 
strength, like, like their toughness versus their actual attack value. Yeah, I mean, is, is is this game of like who can knock out the most, who can just survive the longest? I think the thing is because I, I assume it's it wouldn't be fight to the death. Because mm-hmm. then maybe Vulcan all of a sudden, while well, he's a perpetual, he can kind of cheat. Yes, but Vulcan, sure he's tough, but toughness is not everything in a fight. Um, because again, like if if the case is to the death and everybody all at once, then even though Angron would be a good choice, I think he might go down fairly quickly because he'd just run in and try to do as much damage, uh, and then no, everyone see, can see that's punk that's, him. that's 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 poorly written Angron that you're thinking about. Mm. So Angron was like the best gladiator that there was, right? Ingron's way up there because he came from a gladiatorial background. So more and more because he was upset with how the emperor rescued him and mm-hmm. left all of his gladiatorial brothers and sisters. So he, he got overly aggressive and it was one of those nobody could beat him. So he was more than happy to throw himself into the fray and with the idea that if he dies, who cares? You know what I mean? He, he's not a big fan of the emperor anyways. I think if, right. he, if he was focused in trying to win, then, you know, He'd, he'd be way up there. Um, now, Sanguinius can kind of... See, Sanguinius cheats because he can see into the future. And same with Kurs. So they're both great fighters, but, you know, are they are they able to get their their whole little future sight thing? Yeah, that's, that's hard to say. Right, because that's almost kind of cheaty to me. Versus, and yeah, like Magnus being a psyker. What could he do with his psychic powers that could help or would that... Right. So without getting into the psychic power aspect of it, I think yeah, my top three would stay as is. But when you get to cheat with psychic powers, sure, Sanguinius, Kurs, and Magnus all of a sudden are, you know, talking points as well. Mm-hmm. But in a straight up melee weapon fight, I stick with my top three. Okay. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. I got two left here. Vectus Guderian. Uh, what are your thoughts about the new Gene Sealer Cult Achilles Ridge Runner model previewed today on the Games Workshop community website? It looks super cool. I really like it. Uh, it's this little buggy kind of thing. Um, it just it fits for me. I thought about here. Have you pun- pull, pull a picture of it. What is it called? You're, you keep scrolling past it. It's the top one. This one? Yeah, that little buggy thing. Ooh. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah, I like that. Um, I like that aesthetic. Now, I wouldn't use it as a replacement. I've not really, I don't like the Torox model. I think it's just not my cup of tea. Um, because the aesthetic doesn't work, but the aesthetic of these things do. I wouldn't do a, a straight swap and say, you know, I'm going to use these as my, excuse me, Toroxes or something, but I like the look. I do a lot. It, it seems very low to the ground and sleek looking. Yep. It looks... Now, is this going to be the same size as, say, the the Speed Freaks? Well, new? scroll up a bit, and the other, you see it next to one of the other Genesis Air Cult vehicles that you've already seen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that one there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, again, that the, the other one it's beside there, I, I don't know what the name of it is exactly, but it's the, the more boxy, kind of chunkier looking one. And yeah, this one definitely looks a lot sleeker, lower to the ground, quicker. Like a little kind of scout type vehicle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do like the, 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 the look of that one. So now we got uh, bu- 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 last one here, Catfish666. Thanks for answering my questions. Of course, thank you for putting questions in. And thanks for everybody that's uh, that's taking part in this because it's uh, without you folks taking part, uh, there isn't a show. Yeah, definitely. And now, see, I've, I've now set a precedent and now they're asking me to put it up on screen. I shouldn't have done the first one. Now you guys are going to make me put stuff up on the screen every time. Bam. Nope, they haven't seen it yet. Not bam, and bam. See, that thing looks pretty cool. I like that. Just stare at it. Oh, it's right there. It's floating. Ooh. Um, and yeah, next time in Vegas, uh, show me some good stouts. I'm totally down. I've never been to Vegas before, so I would love to get out to LVO one year. But that's it. That's all, folks. That's all the questions, and that's all we got the time for today. So, again, big thanks to everybody that's tuned in. Uh, next week is going to be Stefano himself. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them after we post this video on the Mini Wargaming website. You can leave them there. Um, and other than that, yeah, keep being awesome. Happy Wargaming.
See you guys next week. Bye-bye.